So tonight's class is on doing or leading or being involved with Birkat Hamazon. Uh, I'm going to answer a few questions that were here in the chat room real quick before we get started. Menachem asked what uh, band's music I was playing um, for the uh, one shul sort of intro music. Uh, so the first was Kirtan Rabbi, and the second was De Leon. So De Leon, uh, Dan Sachs, great musician. De Leon is his group. Uh, had the pleasure of seeing them twice now. Uh, had the pleasure of being on J Dub Records with them when J Dub Records was still around. Uh, so great, great group of people. So the notes for tonight's class aren't really notes. You're actually going to use a bencher. So we have these for sale in e-format on Nook and Kindle. We also have them available as a PDF download. Um, you just go on the Punctora website and you can download them from there. All you have to do is give an email address. Um, however, for tonight's class, I'm gonna be extra generous and I'm just gonna give you the PDF for free. You don't even have to register uh, your uh, email address. So there's the link right there in the chat room. Yet another reason why you need to be in the chat room. And if you're watching this class sort of after, uh, after the live event, you can just go on the punctora.org website and download it from there. It's called Beer Cut Hamazone, A Community Venture. It's a little green book. So let's uh, start by saying the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melch HaOlam, Asher Kedoshanu B'Mitzvotah, Vitzivanu Lasok B'Divrei Torah. It is a blessing to be given the opportunity to study the Torah, to study Parsha Ekev, and to uh, glean its teachings on praying after meals. So an interesting thing about Judaism is that really the Judaism we practice now is rabbinic Judaism. Does anyone know or have a sense of what I mean by the term rabbinic Judaism? and how that may be different from other traditions. Uh, Mikey says versus Karaite, okay, sure. Uh, Menachem says post-temple, okay, that's absolutely true. Uh, Talmudic teachings and oral law, okay, we're getting somewhere. What is really meant by the term rabbinic Judaism is the idea that we don't necessarily take the Bible literally, and we don't necessarily do all of the things that are, are part of biblical Judaism. So as an example, we do not offer the Passover offering in the temple. We no longer offer a sin offering or a peace offering in the temple. Um, so it's not about halacha per se. It's about literal interpretations of some of these sort of different rituals and things like that. We no longer do the ritual of sota as an example. Um, so we don't necessarily do everything that's in the Bible. So Brian asked the question, isn't the Bible more poetic and metaphoric in a way? In a lot of ways, yes, and in a lot of ways, no. Thou shalt not kill is something that we definitely stick to, right? We don't really take that as metaphorical. Um, so it really depends, right? It depends on the circumstances. Now, there are a lot of things that we consider very Jewish, very Torah-oriented things. So as an example... Kashrut. We definitely think specifically meat and milk. Like that's a very Jewish thing. That's a very Torah thing in our opinion. Lighting Shabbat candles is a very Torah thing. Kiddush is another Torah thing. But what's interesting is these things aren't explicitly in the Torah. The Torah does not say offer Kiddush on Saturday morning. The Torah does not say do not mix meat and milk. Uh, the Torah does not say um, a lot of things that we just sort of think of as being Torah true Judaism. These are actually Talmudic ideas. Now, what I think is interesting is how people will get really wound up about certain things like kitneyot. Does anyone know what that term is, kitneyot? It has to do with Passover. Mikey got it. Beans. So it's beans and rice and corn. 
So there's a custom within Ashkenazi community that you don't eat these things, even though they're not specifically said to be um, uh, specifically said to be you know leaven and things like that. Um, you know, the argument is that you can take rice and grind it down and make rice flour, as an example. So Ashkenazi Jews don't eat rice. Well, there – it's funny. So there's a community of Reform Jews that um, someone I know was involved with, and she was talking about – she's a vegetarian. She was talking about how she uh, – would eat beans and rice, and the reason why is that she didn't eat meat, she didn't eat fish, obviously she didn't eat shellfish, so what was she going to have? And so she ate beans and rice, and she just said, you know what, I'm not Ashkenazi, so I can get away with that, you know? And she said it was funny, though, because she knew people in the community that she belonged to who were very, very liberal. I mean, they ate pork, and they, you know, meat and milk was not an issue, and all these other things. But if you ate rice on Passover, that was like the worst possible thing you could do. Like that was just an – like you were absolutely spitting on Pesach if you ate rice on Passover. So it's these funny things that we've sort of made into Torah true Judaism. What's ironic though is that if you look at this week's Torah portion, it actually says that uh, we should um, – Say Birkat Hamazon. So what it specifically says, Deuteronomy 8.10, When you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he gave you. Okay? Now, we can obviously argue about the word he and all of that, but let's go with the flow on this one. So it actually says we have to say a blessing after we eat. It's a Torah-commanded idea that we have to say a blessing. But it's interesting, when you go into a lot of communities, you don't see Birkat Hamazon being done with any regularity. Um, I belong to a Reconstructionist synagogue at one point. They never did it. Uh, I That was the one and only synagogue I ever formally belonged to in terms of membership. Um, and I don't anymore. But, uh, you know, I've been to reform things, conservative things. You know, obviously, I'm all over the map. I am not a movemental monogamist when it comes to Judaism, um, but uh, I've you know you'll go into a conservative environment where you're convinced you're going to see Birkat done, and you don't necessarily see it. You go into a reform community where technically the reform movement does have a version of Birkat. I have yet to see it done in a reform community. So. It's interesting how the Bible specifically says we're supposed to do this, and yet we don't. Uh, you know, Brit Mila, circumcision, is, is in the Bible. It says you have to do that. You have to circumcise. We would, we would always say, I mean, unless you're on that particular, and we're not going to get into that tonight, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people who maybe don't keep to a lot of uh, mitzvot for one reason or another, but circumcision, they all agree that's something that is a Jewish thing that you do, right? But birkat is something you're supposed to do as well. So why is bris better than birkat, you know? It, why? Why is the circumcision more important than the birkat is? Both in the Bible, both things you're supposed to do, but one always takes precedent over the other. So just an example. So anyway, that's why I wanted to talk about Birkat tonight. Also, because since it's something we don't do that often, it tends intend, uh, excuse me, it tends to be uh, very intimidating. So you go into a wedding or you go into um, you know a Shabbat event, and everyone has their little you know sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're sort of a greenish color like this. These are the new ones. I'll talk about this later. Um, you know, and everyone's just, you know, uh, you know, and all, and all that. And it's just totally overwhelming, right? And so we just kind of freak out and we don't do it. And we think it's tough. Um, but I wanted to talk about that because for me it was tough. And it was purely because I wasn't used to doing it. And now that I am used to doing it, uh, it's a lot easier for me. It's like anything else in life. So I want to go through and help you to do Birkat. Um, and we're going, to do, we're going to do this a couple of different ways. I have found two videos that are fantastic. One is from United Synagogue. Uh, the other is 
uh, a reform rabbi that I've spoken with who made this particular video. And so both videos are fantastic. They're really, really helpful. I'm going to play both of those, um, and then we're going to do this kind of together. So um, again, I'm going to post the link here to download the PDF because you're really going to want to have this in front of you. So have another window open with this in it. And what I'm going to do is first just kind of explain what Birkat is and what a bencher is and all that. So bencher is Yiddish, or benching is Yiddish. And basically what it's talking about is one of these little books. So this is from the conservative movement. It's called Bakol Achad. It's a great book to own. I think it's $5, including shipping. Um, I got mine as part of my uh, rabbinical um, schooling. And uh, it not only has Birkat in it, but it has all kinds of other songs in it, and it's all uh, translated and transliterated. So just opening this up here, it's got candle lighting, uh, Shalom Aleichem, all of the Kiddush, um, all the Zimrot for Shabbat. It's got all kinds of different songs. So when you see people doing uh, these things like uh, beer cot or singing certain songs, and they happen to know the melodies and all that. A lot of times, particularly if you've converted to this religion, you think, oh, well, this is just like some born Jew thing. Like, you were just born into it, so every day people were singing these songs to you. I guarantee you that's not true unless you're Orthodox. They learn it at camp. You know, that's where, these, where people learn this stuff. They learn it in camp. Um, if you're an adult and you didn't have the camp experience, then you got to learn it as an adult. And so this is a great way to do it, that and YouTube. Tamara asked the question, where can you get this book? So you just order it online. Uh, it's literally B apostrophe K-O-L Echad, E-C-H-A-D, Bakol Echad. Uh, you can get it from uh, USY, United Synagogue Youth, or you can go onto the conservative, conservative Judaism's uh, movemental website. Um, I don't remember what it is, but if you just type in Conservative Judaism America, it'll pull up and you can get this. Um, so our book is fantastic. Our beer cot is great because it's got the same thing for Friday night that's in here. The text is bigger, so it's easier to read. Um, but I, I highly recommend getting this book. Now there's other ones. This is a, another example. This is my roommate's uh, venture right here. So this is from the Hebrew Prayer Learning Series, and it just has a different kind of layout. I personally don't like this layout. Um, I like this one a lot better. The reason why I like these small books is that this is what you encounter at Jewish events. So while maybe this is a better learning material, I personally think since this is what you're going to be using, this is what you need to start with. So let's go on ahead and uh, take a moment. If you have any questions that you want to ask before I get into the videos and before we get into the actual uh, language. Does anyone have any questions or any expectations coming out of this class on what you'd like to learn uh, beyond what we've just talked about and doing the blessings themselves? Because really this is a doing class. It's not as much a study text type of class. So I really want to make sure everyone's completely satisfied up to this point. So Mikey is okay. Let's let's hear for some other people. Really, seriously, this is the time to ask questions. The, you know, really ask them now. Okay. Looks like everyone's doing pretty good. Okay, great. So we're going to start with the first video. So the first video comes from um, a reform rabbi. He's using the Birkat Hamazon. It's um, an abridged version that is part of Mishkan Tefillah, which is the prayer book of the Reform Movement. So we're going to watch his video. I'm going to make some comments on that. Here's how to bench Birkat Hamazon. Make the blessing after the meals according to the Jewish tradition, as it's found in Mishkan Tefillah, the Reform Sidur, the short form on page 606. On Shabbat only, we start here. 
Shir Hamalot Beshuv Adonai Et Shiva Tzion Hainu Kecholmim Az Yemales Chok Pinu Ushonenu Rinam Az Yomru Vagoim Higdil Adonai Lasot Im Elem Higdil Adonai Lasot Im Anu Hainu Semechim Shuva Adonai et Shevitenu Kafikim Banegev Hazor im Bedim Aberina Yiksoru Aloch Yelech Uvacho No Semeshech Hazara Bo Yavo Yavo Verina No Se Alumota on all days, the leader then says, Chavarim v'chaverot nevarech. And the group responds, Yehi shem Adonai mevorach me'etav yad olam. And the leader repeats, Yehi shem Adonai mevorach me'etav yad olam. And then continues, Bereshut ha'chaveram nevarech Eloheinu she'elchanu mishalo. And the group, group chants, Baruch Eloheinu she'elchanu mishalo, uvtuvo chayinu. And the leader repeats, Baruch Eloheinu she'elchanu mishalo, uvtuvo chayinu. Baruch hu uvaruch shemo. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hazan et haolam kulo bituvo, bechein bechesed urachamim. Hu noten lechem lechol basar, ki leolam chasto, uvtuvo hagadol, tamid lo chasalanu, ve al yechsalanu, mazon leolam vaed, bavur shemo hagadol. Ki hu el zan um farnes la kol, u metiv la kol, u mechin mazon, le kol griotav ha-sheba-ra, baruch atah Adonai, ha-zan et ha-kol. Kakatu v'achaltam, v'savata uverachtam, et Adonai Elohecha, Al ha'aretz ha'tova asher natan lach, Baruch ata Adonai, al ha'aretz ve'al ha'mazon. Uvene Yerushalayim, ir ha'kodesh b'mhera v'yameinu, Baruch ata Adonai, bohone berachamav, Yerushalayim, amen. Ha-Rachaman, hu yimloch aleinu le'olam va'ed. Ha-Rachaman, hu yitbarach b'shamayim uva'aretz. Ha-Rachaman, hu yishlach bracha murba b'bayit hazem. Ve'al shulchan zeh, shalchanu alav. And when it's Shabbat, we continue... Ha-Rachaman, hu yishlach lanu et Eliyahu ha-Navi. Ha-Rachaman, hu yishlach lanu et Eliyahu ha-Navi. Zachor latov, vivaser lanu lanu, vivaser lanu lanu, vivaser lanu. Bishorot tovot, yeshuot v'nechamot. Ha-Rachaman, hu yanchilenu yom shikulo ho-Shabbat, u-menucha lechaye ha-olamim. And if it's on a festival day, a Yom Tov, we add, Ha-Rachaman, hu yanchilenu yom shikulo ho-Tov. And then, on every day, we conclude with, O se shalom bimromav, hu ya a se shalom, aleinu ve al kol Yisrael ve imeru amen. 
Adonai oz le'amo yitain, Adonai yivarech et amo v'ashalom. That's how we chant Birkat HaMazon at Temple Judea. So, you've got your first taste, right? So, naturally, you should all be able to do that from memory, right? No problems, right? <laughs> now that you've, you know, had one experience with it, that should be plenty for you to, uh, to do it straight from memory, no problem. Yeah, no problem, as Menachem and uh, Sarah have said. Well, of course, no one's going to expect you to do that. We have this fear in Judaism that... Um, Somehow we're going to be tested at one point, and we're going to be outed as not being Jewish enough or not being smart enough Jewishly. I'm curious if anyone else ever has that concern. Do you ever have that concern that you're going to go into a Jewish environment and you're not going to be smart enough? You're not going to be Jewish enough. They're going to do things that you don't know how to do, and you're just going to look stupid, and they're just going to, you know, they're going to out you as being not religious enough or whatever. Okay, so somehow like it seems like every single person so far has said yes let me tell you something no one cares <laughs> no one cares and no one's going to out you and you know what if they're going to out you they're a jerk and there's something that they don't know that someone else knows right this this does not happen. This is a fear that we've built up for ourselves to prevent ourselves from getting involved in Jewish life it's absolutely, it is a collective social phobia that we have created so that we prevent ourselves from getting involved. I really do believe that. You know, I'm studying to uh, be a rabbi. I bomb this constantly, constantly. I bomb the heck out of this. Every Friday where I'm somewhere where there's beer cut, I bomb it every single time at least halfway through. I fail miserably. Having said that, do you now think I'm not smart enough to be a rabbi? You know? Like, everyone has different strengths. I know plenty of rabbis who can't build a website. So, there you go. So, this is this is the point. The point is you only get you only get better if you keep doing it. Um, so as an example, I have a friend who's a rabbi, conservative rabbi, went to school for you know five years or however long. Um, you know knows Aramaic. He can translate Gemara. You know the whole darn deal. He studies every single week, and he studies stuff that he studied in school. You know. And he told me, he's like, you never stop. You spend a day a week studying just to stay ahead of the curve, right? And this doesn't include all of the other things that you need to know how to do. So what does that mean for those of us who aren't interested in becoming rabbis? It means you're fine. You're absolutely fine. So is there anyone who had trouble downloading the Beer Cot PDF that I posted in the chat room? Does everyone have a copy now? Or does anyone want a moment to go get a bencher if they, for some reason, are having a problem? Okay, so looks like so far everyone has a copy. I really want to make sure that you have a copy because that's what we're going to do. This, the rest of this class won't work for you unless you take the time to get that link. So I'm going to post it one more time just in case anyone's having trouble. So you need to have one window open with this and one window open with, uh, uh, with the class. If anyone's having technical problems, please let me know. I can't help unless I know, because I can't see what's on your screen. Because um, we're going to do this together. Now, we got a taste with that first video uh, of what uh, sort of what it's like to do beer cot. Um And so, what are some things that we noticed? Well, so. Just like a siddur, you have different things that you say on different days. Okay, so Shabbat, holidays, what have you. There's different melodies for different parts. Um, so that's something that you have to think about. 
And uh, what else? Let's see. Um, what else have we got in here? Um, there's, oh, okay, here's the last piece. So a leader, okay, so you generally have someone who leads Birkat. Now, here's the thing about leading Birkat. If everyone wants to do Birkat, and there's people there who know how to do Birkat and have done Birkat before, you're not actually leading anything. All you're doing is this beginning part. Um, after you sing Shir Hamalot, uh, you do this Chavarai Nevarech part where it's like a call and response. That's the only leading part um, that you're actually going to do. Uh, that just means you're going to say the first three words or so of um, a song section, and everyone's going to kind of pick up after you. So if you forget a melody or something like that, it's not a big deal. The other thing I want to point out is that the, the melodies that we're studying tonight are Ashkenazi. If you do this in a Sephardic community, it is completely different. Okay? Completely different way of doing this. Um, so... Um, again, it goes back to familiarity. You you know how to use it. You have a sense for how it works. You're probably never going to walk into an Orthodox synagogue and be the one guy whose job it is to lead beer cut. It's uh, literally, I can't think of any circumstance where that would ever happen. So if that's not where, you know, you're supposed to be, anything less than that is easy. So just try to instill a little bit of confidence here that this is not the end of the world and you will be able to do it and it's fine. Okay. Another trick that I want to show if you are a person that uh, does not know how to read Hebrew and I'm going to take a good stab that it, we've got about 11 people in the classroom right now that are using the chat room um, that's probably going to be at least 75% can't read Hebrew this quick. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little technique that I used to use. I don't use this anymore because part of school is that I have to improve my Hebrew. So I don't use this anymore. But uh, here's a technique that I use. When you get, and this is good for a siddur too. When you get um, a siddur that's transliterated, meaning that it sort of says phonetically what the... Um, what the uh, Hebrew is. It sort of spells it out for you. One of the things about people that transliterate benchers and Sidurim is that they can actually read Hebrew and they speak it, or if it's a written language, if it's a spoken language, if it's biblical Hebrew and Aramaic, no one speaks that, but they know how to read it and write it. So what they do is they transliterate based on the sentence. Okay, so uh, let me find a good example of that real quick. Um, okay, so here's a line from Shir Hamalot. It's Hazarim Bedima Berina Yitzkoru. Okay. Uh, and when you sing that, it's it, it's one line here, Hazarim Bedima Berina Yitzuru. The way you would sing that in an Ashkenazi tradition would be Ba Negev Hazarim Bedima Berina Yitzuru. Okay, now if you have any familiarity with uh, song lyrics or uh, anything dealing with music, you wouldn't necessarily have that on one line, or poetry wouldn't be written that way. You'd have uh, Hazorim Bedima as one line, and then Berena Yixoru as the second line. But because they translate this, or they transliterate this rather, the way that the sentence is written, sometimes it doesn't work. It doesn't actually flow correctly the way that it's sung. Now, with Birkat Hamazon, that's a little bit better, but like with a Siddur in particular, you like Lachado D or um, 
Shiru Ladonai. Shiru Ladonai is actually the worst because the way that it's generally transliterated in like Mishkan Tefila and a few other prayer books, it's just all over the place. And if you've never sung that before or you've never paid attention to it, uh, you might get a little bit mixed up. So this is a technique that will help you with that. What you do, and I'm, hopefully this will come through okay because I forgot to make the uh, JPEG image of this to put on the screen, but hopefully you'll see this okay. What you do is you take your bencher. It is okay to write in a siddur or in a bencher. There's no halakha that says you can't. What you do is you make notes. And so what I do is I make little space marks. So let me see how I can do this here. Okay, so if you look right here, you'll see little lines. And in fact, you'll even see right here, I've written a word in that was missing. Okay, so what that basically is, is those are space marks. That's like a breath mark. So, you know, this line, this first line for Shir HaMalot is Shir, as a Shir HaMalot B'Shuva Donai. Okay, but that's not how you sing it. It's actually two parts. Shir HaMalot, pause. B'Shuva Donai, pause. Okay, so what I did is I just made a little slash mark right there to tell me that... Sorry that this is very unprofessional. I forgot to make this JPEG tonight. But you can see where I've made myself little spaces so that I know, like, stop. Okay? Now, in Hebrew, you kind of have this with certain words. Um, but if you're just running from transliteration, you just make that little mark, and it's just so simple. Like, this is the easiest darn thing. And you can do this with a siddur. Um, so one thing about me is I have trouble reading straight lines. So what I do is um, I use a red pencil or a red pen. The best thing is if you can go to an art store and get an erasable red pencil and make the marks that way because this is going to be printed in black and white. If you use black ink or a black pencil, you might get confused because you're trying to do this quickly. So use a red pencil or a blue pencil or whatever, something that's going to contrast from the page, and then that's going to tell you where the stop marks are. And I tell you, when you're first starting out before you get into Hebrew, it is just such a welcomed thing. And the great thing about something like this is it fits in a purse or in your pocket. So... It's not like a gigantic siddur, but I, I still think if you're davening you need, and you're just using a transliteration, uh, do this. I mean, it's so simple. I learned this from a guy who does Kabbalat Shabbat as a lay leader, and he does it with, uh, with the Hebrew. He actually will make marks into the Hebrew so that he knows what to do. Um, he also, you can also develop a little bit of a language. So uh, there's trope marks in chanting the Torah. Um, so, you know, as an example, if you were to read the first, uh, line of the book of Genesis, it's Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz, okay? But that's not how you chant it, it's Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz ve'aretz. Um, and there's little trope marks that tell you you know, right curve, left curve, you know, and things like that so that you can know how you're supposed to sing it. That's all you're doing. You're writing your own trope. So, simple little technique that no one will ever tell you. Like, you will, you will never hear anyone say this, and it's so genius. It's so simple. Anyway, okay. So, let's move on to the next part. So, this video is from United Synagogue. It's Orthodox. Um, this is going to be a longer video. One thing I like about this video over other ones is that it uses Sephardic pronunciation. You might be a little bit thrown off by some of it because I believe the gentleman has a British accent. So some of the ways he uses the words, like he'll add the letter R to the end of words that aren't there. That's just his accent. Um, I do stuff like that all the time because I'm Southern. Um, and uh, so you kind of have to grin and bear that one. But this is another great video. Let's watch this and then let's uh, do some practice. You shall eat 
and be satisfied and bless the Lord your God. And that is why we say Birkat Amazon, the grace after meals, as a token of our thanks and appreciation to God. Grace after meals varies on different occasions. On the Sabbath and festivals, we start with Psalm 126. <laughs> Az yamru vagoyim hedel adonai la sotimele hedel adonai la sotimanu hayinu samechim ayayaya yeshuva adonai ejviteinu kafikim panegev Hazorim abadim abarin ayiktoru Loch yelechu vacho Nosei meshech hazara Bo yavor varina Nosei alumotav Hallelujah. Mi a malel gvu at Adonai, Yashmi a kol tehilato. With at least three men over bar mitzvah age present, we continue. Rabotai nevarech. Yehi shem Adonai mevarech ma'ata va'ad olam. Yehi shem Adonai mevarech me'ata v'yad olam be'rishut. Maranan v'rabanan v'rabotai nevarech. Elohenu is said if there's a minion, otherwise everyone says And Elohenu again if there are ten or more men. Baruch Elohenu Shachanu Mishala Uftiva Khainu Baruchu Baruch Shema in all circumstances, we continue. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Hazan Et Olam Kulo Betuvo Bechein Bechesed Vrachamim Tain Lechem Lechol Basa Ki Leolam Chastoch Baruch at Nai Hazan et Hakol Nodelcha at Nai Eloheinu Al Shein Chalta La Avoteinu Eret Chenda Tova Uchava Al Shot Seitanu Adonai Eloheinu Me Eret Mitzvayim Uvditanu Mi Beit Avadim the Albreta Hashe Hatantam Bitsarenu, the Altuata Hashe Lima de Tanu, the Altuke Hashe Hodantanu, the Alchaim Hain Behese Chihonantanu, Palachila Mazon Sheatazan, Um Faune Sotanu, Me Bahol Yom, Uberhol Eight, Uberhol Shah. We all have called Adonai Eloheinu Anachnu Moadim Lach, Uma Varachim Otah, Yit Barach Shimcha Befi Cholchai, 
תמיד לעולם ועד, ככתוב ואכלת, וסבעת ובירכת את אדוני אלוהיך על הארץ הטובה אשר נתן לך. ברוך אתה אדוני על הארץ ועל המזון. רחם אדוני אלוהינו על ישראל עמך ועל ירושלים עמך ועל ציון משכן כבודך ועל מלכות בית דוד משיחך ועל הבית הגדול והקדוש שנקרא שמך עליו אלוהינו אבינו ואוהינו זוננו פרנסנו וכלכלנו ואביכנו וכבח לנו אדוני אלוהינו מהירה מכל צרותינו ונעל תצריכנו, אדוני אלוהינו, לא לידי מדנה בשר ודם, ולא לידי ואתה מקים לידך המלאה הפתוחה, הקדושה והחווה שלא נבוש, ולא ניכלם לעולם ו... On Shabbat, we continue with this prayer. Ritzei v'hachalit zeinu Adonai enoheinu b'mitzvotecha u'mitzvot yom ha-shvi'i ha-shabbat ha-gadol v'ha-kadosh ha-zeh ki yom zeh gadol v'kadosh hu l'fanecha l'ishpat bo v'lanuach bo b'yahava k'mitzvot v'sonecha ברצונך הניח לנו אדוני אלוהינו שלא תהיה צרה ויגום וינחה ביום מנוחתנו והרינו אדוני אלוהינו בנחמת ציון עירך ובבניין ירושלים עיר קודשך כי אתה הוא בעל שורות ובעל הנחמות. And then we continue on all occasions with the following. ובני ירושלים אל הקודש במהרה מיהמנו ברוך אתה אדוני בונה ברחמיו ירושלים אמן ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם הרל אבינו מלכנו אדירנו בוראנו גואלנו יוצרנו קדושנו קדוש יעקב רואינו רואי ישראל, המלך הטוב והמיטיב לכל אשר בכל יום ויום. הוא היטיב, הוא מיטיב, הוא ייטיב לנו, הוא גמלנו, הוא גמלנו, הוא יגמלנו לעד. לכם, לחסד ולרחמים ולרווח, הצלה והצלחה, ברכה וישוע, נחמה, פרנסה וכל קלה, ורחמים וחיים ושלום וכל טוב, ומכל טוב על יחסרנו. הרחמן הוא ימלוך עלינו לעולם ועד, הרחמן הוא יפרח בשמיים ובארץ, הרחמן הוא ישתבח לדורדורים, ויתפאר בנו לנצח נצחים, ויתהדר בנו לעד ולעולמי עולמים. הרחמן הוא יפרנסנו ובכבוד. הרחמן הוא ישפור עולנו מעל צווארנו, והוא יוליכנו כמו מיעוט לארצנו. הרחמן ישלח ברכה מרובה בבית הזה, ועל שולחן זה שולחנו עליו. הרחמן הוא ישלח לנו את אליהו הנביא זכרו לטוב, ויבשר לנו בשורות טובות. ישועות ונחמות, הרחמן הוא יברך. An unmarried person at home says, אותי ואת כל אשר לי. A married man in his own home says, אותי ואת אשתי ואת כל אשר לי. A married woman in her own home says, אותי ואת בעלי ואת כל אשר לי. A guest says, 
את בעל הבית הזה, אותו ואת אשתו, ואת זרו, ואת כל אשר לו. At one's parents home, one says. את אבי מורי בעל הבית הזה, ואת אמי מורתי בעלת הבית הזה, אותם ואת זרם, ואת כל אשר להם. To include all those present, we say, ואת כל המסובין כאן. There are other variations too, but we will carry on from here. אותנו ואת כל אשר לנו, כמו שהתברכו אבותינו אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, בר כל מכל כל הקין יברך אותנו כולנו יחד. בברכה שלמה ונוימה, אמן. במרום ילמדו עליהם ועלינו זכות שתהי למשמרת שלום ונישא ברכה מאת אדוני וצדקה מלאי אישינו ונמצאכם ושכל טוב בעיני אלוהים אבי אדם On Shabbat, we say the following. Ha-Rachaman, hu yan-chileinu, yom shikul ha-Shabbat, u-menucha l'chayei ha-olamim. On all days, continue here. Ha-Rachaman, hu yizakeinu, limot ha-Moshiach, u-lechayei ha-olam ha-ba. On weekdays, we start the next verse with the word Magdil. But we are showing the Shabbat benching. So we will start with the word Migdol. Migdol Yeshuot Malkov Yosech Eselim Shichol David Lezaawa Adolam Osei Shalom Bimroi Mav Hu Yaase Shalom Aleinu V'yal Kol Yisrael V'yimmeru Amen Amen. Yiru et Adonai Kedosha Av Ki Yehi Mafso Lirei Av Kafirin Rashu V'ra'evu V'dorshe Adonai L'yachas Uchol Tov Hodu L'adonai Ki Tov Ki Le'olam Chasto Poteach Et Yadecha U'maspia L'chokhai V'atzom ברוך הגבר אשר יפתח בדוני והיה אדוני מבטחו נא הייתי גם סגנתי ולא ראיתי צדיק נעזב ולא ראיתי צדיק נעזב וזהרו מבקש לכם אדוני עוז לי עמו ייתן אדוני יברך את עמו ושלום Okay, so once again, I have to ask, does everyone now know how to do it right off the top of their head, and now everyone's going to go out and start doing Birkat for absolutely no reason, and all that great stuff, now that you've seen two YouTube videos? What does everyone think? Two YouTube videos, is that enough? Of course, Mikey says, of course, it's plenty, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, right. That's why we're going to practice together. Okay, so... Now is the fun part. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the abridged part. Are there any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that? So I'm going to address the first issue that Tamara brings up, which is it's a lot to remember. Well, is it a lot to remember? Because you've got a book. It's a lot to remember to quote Bible verses. It's a lot to remember to quote your favorite line from a play. But it's not a lot to just read. You have the cheat sheet. This is the Siddur and the Bencher and the Moxor are all, think of them all as cheat sheets. You don't have to actually know anything because you have it written down. And now that you know about the little note-taking system, um, that's what you do. Okay, so Menachem asks a great question. And I wish I had my other Bencher because it actually does a better job of that. I'm going to look around real quick and see if I can find it. Let's see, I guess I don't have it sitting out. I'm, I'm in the process of moving, so I'm not sure. Um, okay, so here's how you solve that problem. Hold on a sec.
here is how you solve the problem. You go to an office supply store and you get some uh, highlighters, the little magic marker things. You get them in like 10 colors. And it costs like four bucks or something like that. You can get them at like Target or Walmart, something like that. You get a bunch of these, you watch those videos, and you make a code system. So as an example, um, let's go through this. This one is not my color-coded one. I do have one that's color-coded, um, but this one is not that. So here's a melody. Shir hamalot v'shuva donai. That kind of has its own melody. Um, and you don't, there's not another melody that goes with it. So maybe you don't highlight that one. But let's see. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech That's one melody. So maybe that's the red melody or the yellow melody. And then there's No Delecha. Okay, so that's a melody. And then. What does that sound like? It also sounds like harakaman. Try it again. No den lecha harakaman. Okay, so that's a melody. So maybe that's the green melody, right? Because you've got these different colors. And so that's how you remember. You just color the melody. And in the front of your book, you have this empty white space. That's where you make all the notes. So you'd write blue equals, ah, uh, you know, however you wanted to, like, write that out, you know. Different people have different ways of making these notes. But the color code is great because if you even wanted to go really hardcore with it, you could highlight every single part of a melody and then switch colors. So all you're doing is you're not even so much reading the words as you're just reading the you know, the color. So it could be yellow, 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 yellow. Blue, 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 like that, okay? So then that's a way that you'll be able to remember it. So that's why it's great to have your own copy and to bring it with you. Now, another important thing about that, this is what I did. I learned this from a rabbi friend of mine. Put your name on the book. And you don't put it on the inside of the book, you don't put it on the side, you don't put it on the spine. You actually put it on the front of the book, and you tape it on there so you can see property of Patrick Olive right there. And you bring it with you. So, those are great ways of remembering the melodies. Beyond that, I mean, the reality is what we're doing tonight are the Ashkenazi melodies. If you go to a Sephardic synagogue, it's a completely different ballgame. But it's the same words. You'll have a few differences, but it's basically the same language. So go with the flow. Like I said, you're not going to be leading. I highly doubt, I mean, I love all of you, but I highly doubt that in the next 15 minutes, you're going to have to lead, uh, you know, Birkat basically by yourself in an Orthodox synagogue while a rabbi stares over you and judges you. Like, that's just never going to happen. So just go with the flow. Like, if you go... Harakaman, as opposed to Harakaman, blah, 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 blah. Or if you go Harakaman, okay? You know, no one's going to get on the phone and go, oh my gosh, Mikey and Brian, they, they did the melody wrong, and so now we know that they're not real Jews. It's, it's just never going to happen. And I know I keep kind of harping on this sort of stuff, but literally people chicken out of Judaism. And that's why, because of all these weird paranoid fears that we've uh, instilled in ourselves, that one day we're going to be outed, okay? All right, so let's go through this here. Um, actually, you know what? I will use the one that you're using, because that'd be better. So, quick guide to Birkat Hamazon for our Siddur, the one that you got for free, so I'd really appreciate a donation. Um, go to page, let's see, page four. So page four, we have entirely English through page five. Okay, then I did the traditional, and this traditional is, um, this traditional is, uh, transliterated, okay? So this is another one of those examples of, if you look at this, 
the way that it's written on this page, we're looking at page number six here. For Shir Hamalot, it says, Shir Hamalot Beshuv Adonai Ed Shiva Zion. Okay? That's the first line. But you know that's not how it's sung. It's actually, Shir Hamalot, brief break, Beshuv Adonai, brief break, Et Shiva Zion Hainu Kol Hamin. Okay? So that's where you put those breaks in. Okay. Um, and then we have the zimun. So zimun, you have a leader. Okay, so we have all of the sort of information there about who the leader is. So rabotai nevarech. Now, if you said rabotai nevarech or rabotai nevarech, I mean it's fine. You don't have to be melodic if you're not melodic. Matter of fact, one of the best rabbis who does online stuff is Rabbi Jonathan Ginsberg, and to to his own admission, he can't carry a tune. So I'm like taking his uh, I'm taking his um, para rabbinic program on top of my smicha program, and uh, it's so funny. Like he'll start his videos about songs, and he'll just be like, "If you want something better, download something better." I'm doing the best that I can. So hey, like there's a conservative rabbi right there who's telling you. Hey, we all have strengths and weaknesses, so let that be as a source of comfort to all of us. So anyway, the leader, Rabotai Nevarek, and then everyone says, Yehi Shem Adonai Mavarag Miatavi Adolam, etc., etc., etc. So then we get to the uh, end here. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hazan et HaKol Kulo Betuvo Bechein Bechesed Uvrachamim Okay, we go through that. Now, when you get to the Noden Lecha, there's a melody change. So that's when you get into the, I call it the step ladder. And sometimes I'll even write step ladder. It's just like the Harakaman. So it's Noden Lecha Okay, and then you go through it, and Vial uh, Hakol. I've heard it the same way as the Vial Hakol. Adonai Eloheinu Anagnu Modim Lagum Varchim. Okay, so I've heard it that way. I've also heard Vial Hakol Adonai Eloheinu Anagnu. Okay, so I've heard it that way. Again, you just go with the flow. Um, Rachem Adonai I've heard a couple of different ways I've heard it more uh, spoken and let's see um, so th up until you get to Uvene Yerushalayim so up to that point, sometimes it's spoken, sometimes it's more sing songy. It just depends on the crowd. Um, Uvene Yerushalayim does the stepladder thing. Uvene Yerushalayim, <clears throat> I gotta get my tone right here. Uvene Yerushalayim. Okay. Now, here's an example of where it breaks in the middle. So, uh, if you get to Baruch uh, Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Ha'el Ha'avinu, the melody actually changes. It's Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, break. Ha'el Ha'avinu Malkeinu Adoreinu Boreinu Goleinu Yotzureinu Kidoshenu Kedosh Yaakov. Okay, so the Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam is kind of spoken, and then all of a sudden there's this melody that flies out of nowhere. Okay? So, again, it's just... You, you see how everyone feels, and you just kind of go with the flow. Uh, Harakaman is always, almost always, step ladder again. Harakaman, you me look, Elena Leolamba Ed, Harakaman. I'm reading this in transliteration, which is kind of screwing me up because I've been reading in Hebrew, and it kind of 
messes with my brain a little bit. There's a point – I've actually been talking to uh, friends of mine about this. There's actually a point at which you can no longer read transliteration because your brain is so indoctrinated into Hebrew. So I apologize if I'm kind of flubbing on this a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's another Harach Hamam. And then Magdil Haolam. Okay. You heard that one. And then, you know, it basically ends. So it's a pretty straightforward thing. You really, you just have to practice. You have to use your tools. You got to use the slash mark thing. You got to use the highlighter. You've got to come up with your own kind of tips and tricks, but you can get through it. So this video and the two other videos are available on one show. This video from tonight's class will be up again. Uh, will be up in the morning, but the two videos that we watched are already up in the One Show library. So you just click on library and it's there. Uh, but this video will be uh, posted tomorrow afternoon-ish. Um, so these are available. Again, if you ever need any help, um, I have a policy after class that I stay online for about 20 minutes. So if you want to Skype with me, if you want to chat with me, I'm here again practice. Watch the videos. Use the book. Write your cheat sheets out. It's fine. Use transliteration if that's what works for you. But just do it, like honestly. And you know what? If all of you get all you can remember and all you can get through is the Shir Hamalot and then maybe you remember Harak Haman, you can flub your way through the rest and you'll be fine. Really, you'll be fine. You just need to practice. It's like anything else. And you know what? It's not fun and it's boring and no one likes to do it. But if you make a commitment to doing it, just do it. And like I said, no one's going to call you out on it. The very fact that you were there and you were willing to sit for, you know, 5 to 15 minutes after dinner uh, to sing with people, especially if you're that third person, if you're in an Orthodox community, that's very meaningful. So do a mitzvah. Speaking of meets vote, we have a new teacher who's going to be teaching tomorrow, and she's actually with us tonight. Sarah Bas Avraham is going to be teaching about the actual Torah portion. So we had one line of Torah tonight, and we kind of got into other stuff. But uh, she's going to be talking about the Torah portion as it relates to tefillah tomorrow. So we're very excited about that. 8 p.m. Eastern time. Please come for that. Um, we are looking for more prayer leaders and Shabbat leaders. I love the fact that everyone wants to teach the weekly Torah portion and stuff like that. We need prayer leaders. And here's the deal with prayer leading. You can write your own siddur. If you only want to do English and you don't even want to do the Shema, fine. It's cool. Like whatever you're into. You know, if you want to pull, like, some crazy Orthodox stuff and then, like, read some Hasidic stories and then, you know, meditate and then do drum circle, it's cool. If it's Jewish, it's cool. So, really, please own this because we have the demand, but like most things in life, it's very, it's very easy to get people to follow. It's very hard to get people to lead. So, please become a leader. Your time is invaluable. So, please, please consider doing that. If you cannot give time, please give financially. You got a free venture tonight. That's five bucks. You got a free class that you would have had to pay probably $15 for if it was in your community. That's 20 bucks worth of free stuff you got tonight. And you get to talk to me, which we all know is amazing, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, so help out. It costs $120 to broadcast these classes and to have oneshul.org and to have the chat room. And the time that it takes to do research and to try to promote the community and all of these other things, it costs money. But let me tell you something. It costs a heck of a lot less to run OneShul than it does to run actually any independent minion anywhere or a synagogue. We're literally the cheapest game in town. So... Please give. Ten bucks is what we ask for a class. You got twenty dollars worth of stuff, so that's fifty percent off. That's a good deal. So I'm going to give you the donate link to that. Uh, you can do it entirely over PayPal. It's secure. You don't have to have a PayPal account in order to give through PayPal. 
and that link is right here in the chat room or you can just go up to the contact button or you can scroll to the bottom of the page where it says donate. So would really, really appreciate your help. You have no idea. And you know what? I had someone email me once and said, all I can give is $5. Let me tell you something. That $5 is more, five, more, more money than we had before they gave $5. Every little bit helps. There's, this goes back to this whole Jewish fear thing. We're afraid that if we don't give enough, that like we look cheap, right? No, any bit that you give helps. You know, Every dollar that you give helps. So please give. Now, if you are interested in conversion to Judaism or you just like to read new, exciting, interesting books, we have a new book that came out today. Uh, it is a conversion essay book. It includes essays from 10 members of the One Shul and Punk Torah community. It's their essays about their conversions. Uh, it's $13.99. It includes free shipping if you're in the United States. Um, and uh, it's just a really great book. So $13.99. It, all proceeds go to help Punk Torah. So please, please order it. Uh, now, we only have... 25 copies available and actually I think now it's at like 19 because I think we sold six copies today so if you're going to order it do it tonight like honestly do it tonight or do it tomorrow morning because what will happen is there are, there's an email that will go out tomorrow with like the link to all of this stuff because the email that went out today was just the events for one show but I'm going to send out a separate Punk Tora email um, go on ahead and uh, purchase it now because the second that that email hits people's inboxes will sell out like that. So if you're interested, get it. Brian asks if it's available for Nook. Not only is it available for Nook, it's also available for Kindle. And if you go to that link on the Punctora website, it's got download links for Nook and for Kindle. So I appreciate everyone being here. Um, thank you so much. Please come tomorrow for our Torah study. Please volunteer to lead prayer services. We need help, and please give a financial donation and buy the book. I'll stick around in the chat room if anyone wants to chat or Skype. Uh, if not, I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Take care.